So this chapter, guys, of Tokyo Ghoul Re was a very mysterious chapter when it comes to Kaniki and what he's planning in the future. And also clarified a lot of things, like, for example, if Eto was alive and if Shirazu was dead. And also what, you know, hair color was Kaniki's hair. So in the beginning of this chapter, it is clarified that Eto is alive and she's not dead at all. And this comes from Kaniki himself, who states that during his fight with Eto, she was able to manage to leave. She was able to escape. However, during their fight, Kaniki was able to give death state wounds to Eto, but they will heal. So that's a good thing that she's still alive because last chapter I was kind of speculating on if she was going to die. Because to be honest, she's a big character in Tokyo Ghoul and why would she die you know, from Kaniki? And if she did die from Kaniki, I feel like part one when Arima went against Eto, then she should have died there You know, if she did lose to Kaniki. It's also confirmed that Kaniki does have blood red hair. This comes from Yui who says... There's blood all over your hair, wash it off. So, yes, he does have blood red hair. A lot of people are speculating that he had green hair because of Yoshido, who posted a tweet about a month ago, I believe, where Kaniki had green hair. So, yes, it is confirmed he has blood red hair. Now, we also get to see what happens, what happened to Shu and Karen. Now, Karen ends up dying, sadly, because Kaniki throws Shu out of the building. He takes out a cog and stabs him directly in the stomach to Shu and throws him off the building. And during this happens, Karen just bravely goes and saves Shu. And at this moment, you know, they both have a such a moment where Shu actually knew Karen's name and says her name. And at this point, this is where Shu says, it's all right, you know, don't worry about it. Everything's gonna be okay. And Karen just ends up just sacrificing herself and saves Shu. So after this big, sad climax event happens, we get to see what happens to the Quick X Squad. And Yuri, man, this man, he just, he's not giving breaks at all. You know, he's just, like I said, he's very overwhelmed after what happened with Shirazu. And he confronts Kaniki saying, you know, he wanted to see you. And this leads off to where Kaniki says the same thing that he was trying to do in part one of Tokyo Ghoul. So if you guys remember back in part one of Tokyo Ghoul, Kaniki, why Kaniki was always aggravated and always just hating himself because he, you know, was lacking power and he wanted power. And it's exactly the same thing that Kaniki tells Yuri. He says, well, you know, if you wouldn't have lack of ability and power, you probably would have been able to save him. So I feel like Yuri's going to take the same path like why here Kaniki. He's going to be like kind of like Kaniki where he's going to try to be the best and just gain as much power as he can so he can save his friends and not, you know, lose another member of his squad. And the last page is basically such a moment where everyone's just, you know, just giving the last final moment to Shirazu, giving him a fair farewell. Now, we also get to see that Kuniki is now made as an associate special class investigator, and he also was relieved from his duties as being a mentor for the Quick X squad. However, now Yuri is back to becoming the leader of the QS squad, as Yuri, you know, has replaced Shirazu because of, you know, him dying in combat. Uh, but anyway, guys, that is crazy. Uh, really mysterious chapter, especially for Kaniki, man. Because Kaniki was super chill in this chapter. So there has been theories going on that he's planning something. Like, Kaniki is definitely going to plan something. And there's been a big theory going out that he's going to go, you know, still be in CCG. But he's going to destroy CCG from the inside out. So I don't know, guys. Leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. My name is Gil Snapula. Next time, 